All right. Well, the first uh, the first question I have is really you know fairly obvious. <laughs> um, why do you make this invitation public? Uh, because I'm more and more concerned about the the huge change in Australia mm. in the last uh, fifty years, where we went. When I was a young person, anyone who was wealthy, and there were no billionaires, mm. but in the nineteen fifties. Anyone who was wealthy was also known as a philanthropist. Uh-huh. We had the people like the uh, Sir, Sir Vincent Fairfax. We had Sir Edwin Holstrom. Yes, Fire family. They were all they were all wealthy. They normally all had knighthoods. They were called Sir yeah. Fairfax, and they were all known as philanthropists. And then I've gone to this this period where we now have fifty billionaires. Which I can't even imagine someone being a billionaire when there's five million Australians who live pay packet to pay packet. But yeah. fair enough. So we have fifty billionaires, and I'm told that many of them are, are basically donate so little that it's virtually negligible. Mm. And I see it heading to the destruction of Australia as we know it today, because this is a country that was built up on mateship mm. and mateship means you know you look after your mate you have a bit of egalitarianism yeah and that's going and then the reason first of all i put the request into harry was that um tony kidman had called me over 30 years tony kidman is the yeah yeah the late father of nicole kidman and he used to Ask for money, and he used to ask for money openly. He'd mm. come to, he'd invite everyone to a function, and then in, in, and he'd stand up and say, yeah. "Look, I'm raising money for the research that I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, please, you know, would you help?" And I always admired him for that. I, I've never been any good at asking anyone for money. I've been hopeless at that. Mm. But he did that, and I admired him because of it. And so. I thought, well, I'll do the same thing with Harry. And uh, the reason I've done it publicly is it's a message to all wealthy people. Look, you should be openly generous or mm. you're going to destroy this fantastic country because I look back on Russia in 1917 and, of course, the revolution in France where the pitchforks come out because yeah. if you just end up with sheer greed at one end and many millions of very poor people at the other end, in the end they rebel. Yeah, yeah. Well, even though that's unthinkable in Australia for some reason. <laughs> well, I don't know. I think, yes, you, hopefully it's unthinkable, but this incredible difference in wealth is new. Yeah. The world has never been mm. like that before. We now have the man who owns Amazon worth $100 billion. Yeah. Not... 100 million, 100 billion dollars. Yeah. And that's US, so that's 120 billion Australian. And he's earned his money not by inventing some new product, but basically by sacking people. <laughs> he does. He, yeah. he automates the supply chain and cuts out typical workers. Yeah. And, and so that really worries me. Yeah. Um, and then with Harry Triggerboff, um, he has run this very successful campaign to uh, basically make it so Australians don't have the typical quarter-acre block. He's quite proud of it. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's moved people from the quarter-acre block into his high-rise, which mm. he's made billions out of. And when he refused to even talk to me, I said, could I come and talk to you about the fact that so many young Australians now can't afford what was the Aussie dream? He refused to even talk to me. Yeah. And that's his right. But then I always believed that he lived in a unit himself in high rise. I, I thought he's one of these people who loves living in a city in a high rise. He has this beautiful penthouse you see him yes. filmed in. But then... Uh, and someone drew my attention that there he was showing off on Channel 7 his magnificent acreage on the waterfront mm. with uh, lots of grass and trees for his grandkids to play and 
make a cubby house and play cricket, all of the wonderful dream that's been lost. And the actual interviewer actually asked him about that, and he just yeah. said, well, stiff luck. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I changed all that, and stiff luck, and yeah. um, and, and that worried me a bit. Yeah. Well, as a sort of follow-up question to that, Dick, yep. um, would you consider sort of mapping out quite seriously and carefully what his million billion dollars might best be used for? Well, I've said that in my... I, I know more other than in my tape, and you'll see there's the text for it there. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I think a fantastic research hospital, and yeah. I, should, I made a mistake. I should have said, call it the Harry Trigoboff <laughs> Research Hospital, because, yeah. look, once you've got a couple of hundred million... It's really all about showing off. Yeah. And it's basically about showing off once you've got a... Okay, you can't really spend... Once you're worth more than a couple of hundred million, it's been pretty hard to spend any more money. Yeah. But it's about showing off. And that's why I, you know, as I mentioned, McRobinson Chocolates, a famous chocolate manufacturer. Yeah. There's the McRobinson Girls High School. There's the actual McRobinson's Bridge across the Yarra River. Yeah. He... He was doing the right thing, but he was showing off, I presume. Yes. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Mm, mm. These days, most billionaires show off because they have the most expensive waterfront. You know, mine's worth 50 million. Oh, mine's 70 million. Yeah. Or they have the biggest boat. Yeah. So I, I want to show off. Now, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I'm not no, just a human condition. Yeah, yeah. But wouldn't it be great if you could also show off as well as show off by putting something back into people who are less well off. And yeah. Harry could do such fantastic good. I mean, just $1 billion would really, uh, a research hospital for the poor or a hospital for the poor could just yeah. help so many people. And I'm, maybe I'm deluded, but I would have thought he's somehow missing out on this immense pleasure he could get. Mm. From openly helping other people, he does yeah. do some donations. I understand it's not very much, but it's all secretly done. Yeah. Now, that's really sad. Something yeah. was lacking in his bringing up something. I don't know what his parents told him. Yeah. <laughs> but I was lucky. I came up in the Scouts, and I had all these Scoutmasters who were volunteering their time for nothing and yeah. teaching me leadership. But then I was... You know, we had this, you had to help other people at all times and to do a good turn every day. It was very simple stuff um, taught to you as a kid yeah. from the age of eight. I, unfortunately, I don't think Harry's had any of that. Yeah. Have you ever met him? I don't think I have. Maybe at a big function. I, I have to be careful and say, no, I haven't, because Harry would then say, well, he, he did. It would have only been maybe at a great big function, and uh, mm. I just said hello. I've never, unfortunately, been able to sit down and talk to him because he mm. refuses yeah. to talk with me uh, because his view is that just endless growth. What do you, how do you, or let me put it another way, um, I was just uh, reading the other day about um, Paul Ramsey's um, foundation, which he put yep. a lot of money into. How, what's your reaction to that? Oh, absolutely fantastic. See, Paul Ramsey is one of the few, and he always was incredibly generous. And so I just say he's fulfilling his responsibilities when he was alive and when he died, mm. and that's like Twiggy Forrest. Don't yeah. get me wrong, we do have some billionaires, a small number, who fulfil their responsibility. I made a mistake in my, my podcast because I said we only had one who'd signed the Giving Pledge, but I noticed when I clicked on the Giving Pledge that Len Ainsworth is a wonderful mm -hmm. businessman who invented poker machines, but out of you know, electronic poker machines, and he signed the Giving Pledge, and I read his letter, and it's incredibly inspirational. Yeah. The amazing thing about you talking to me, I um, sent this out on Sunday yesterday afternoon and I thought this will hit the media and my phones will be besieged and be on the front page of every newspaper. No one has been going to touch it. You're kidding. Yep. No, there has been, this has not been touched. The Telegraph, I thought, was doing something for Monday, but they just put it on their website, weren't even game to put it in their newspaper because... And I noticed some of the comments on their digital version. You know, people saying, Dick Smith has 
has no right to ask Harry Triggerboff for money. Mm -hmm. Whereas no one thought that Tony Kidman was wrong in asking mm. for money. Uh, but for the money for myself, and nor was Tony Kidman. Yeah. He was asking for to do good things with it, and... Yeah. And, and Dick, um, excuse my ignorance, but I know that you've been very generous, but, but how can you just remind me some of the things that you've done? Because I know you've done a lot. No, I don't want to talk about them at all, but you, you could look them up. My suggestion is you uh, look at that Telegraph article this morning in the yeah. paper, uh, on yeah. the digital version of the paper that mentions something, I okay. think, or look on Wikipedia. Yeah. It's been done by others, but no, I don't want to talk about them because, see, that's, oh, you don't want to be a do-gooder. No, I know what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be a do-gooder. And so this is, but it's quite interesting that, you know, the very fact that no one in the media, the left ABC, you'd think they'd want to touch something about billionaires, no way. It's almost as if no one is allowed oh, they're a billionaire and you, you mustn't imply that they're not fulfilling their obligations as a person. The only reason Harry's made so much money, I mean, he's quite brilliant, but the, 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 the main reason is this fantastic society with yeah. the police and everything. That was one of the other things I recommended. He set up this foundation to police legacy. People who have kept him see yeah, yeah. many countries he'd be kidnapped. Yeah. Any of us would be kidnapped, but we have this police force and a military to give us this wonderful security. Mm. And then those people get killed. Mm. And so what about the poor families? Well, it's, it's funny well, you should you say... Know, I've always helped yeah. police legacy because that's, you know, the, the widows of these policemen have been killed while they're trying to protect us. It's funny you should say that because I'm not sure if you're aware, but uh, there's a new film just about to come out telling the true story of uh, Get His Grandson, Kidnapping. Oh, well, that'd be really interesting to. Well, I, I, yeah. I can't wait to watch it, sort of thing. Yeah, well, that's coming soon. So that's that's actually a good that's a good angle for the story. Yeah. So to <laughs> me, you know, you're the only reporter I've spoken to or anything. It, it's just it's quite amazing to me. It's almost as if the journalists say, "Oh, that you can't." That's sort of wrong. You must let these billionaires um, be on their own and be greedy if they want to be mm. and not dare. I'm not criticising. If you listen to my audio, I'm being positive and saying you've done incredibly well. Yes, I, I yes. saw that. You have I a noticed, difference I mean, population, but how about yeah. before you die doing yeah. something really fantastic? Yeah, I mean, look, I understand it, but... <laughs> But you, but you're talking about. You mentioned before. You wonder how was he brought up? Yep. Um, because it does go to character uh, and and perhaps to upbringing. Um, Why don't journalists write about it then? Yeah. The fact that we can have someone worth eleven billion dollars and be quite happy not to be known as a philanthropist. Yeah. Uh, I I should give um, Mr. Trukovov a, a call. Yeah, definitely do, definitely yeah. do. Um, try and track him down. Was asked that he he was sent my I sent my podcast to him. Yeah, and he answered the telegraph with three uh, sort of questions. So they asked him three questions. I oh, know he came back and basically said Dick Smith should stick to his own business. Mm -hmm. Well, that is my business now. I'm trying to raise money for important causes. So that's what I'm doing now. I mean, I've made enough money for myself. I'm quite well off. And the uh, a few other things he said, which I tended to agree with him on. You know, he's, he's, he's certainly won the perpetual growth thing. I've, I've had mm. no, eight out of ten Australians agree we should have a plan, but no political party does. It's just grow like mad. Yeah. Uh, presumably to a few trillion people, and then we can't even move. I don't know what the plan will be. Yeah, there's no plan. But then, you know, let's not get into politicians and vision no, and no, stuff we won't like get that. that. <laughs> I'm, uh, where, do you, where would you be able to get a story run if you're going to get something run? Where do you think who would run it? Well, I've been writing um, lately, uh, freelancing most of the time. I've been writing mostly for The Spectator 
and yep. for the um, for the Australian. Those are my two main outlets. Right. Well, I mean, I'd love you to do something because it's amazing to me that this has had no media coverage whatsoever. You'd think one wealthy person saying to another wealthy person, hey, come on, mm. you've got to dig deep and, you know, you're not fulfilling your responsibility. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And... Um, no, no comment. Not even you know. A lot of people on the, some people say that trolls are saying, you know, I have no right to be doing this. <laughs> so what? Everyone just shuts up. I mean, most people are thinking, God, imagine. Look at all. We've got a fifty billionaires now, and only two have signed the Bill Gates pledge. Yeah. And most of them are not known as philanthropists. Whereas, as I said, in nineteen fifties, every wealthy person was. Yeah. It's... And. It's Peter an interesting Feynman, Peter Feynman was the director of Crocodile Dundee, and he went and lived for about 10 years in Los Angeles. And he said to me once, he said, Dick, in America, the ethos is that if you're wealthy, you also have to be known as a philanthropist, as a giver. You just wouldn't be able to join the golf club. Yeah. If you're known as wealthy, and you're not known to be openly generous. Yes. Whereas he said in Australia, it is completely different. Somehow... From the 1950s on, we've gone into yeah. this thing where you can have incredibly wealthy people who are not known to give anything away. And by the way, when they tell me they do it secretly, I have difficulty in believing that because I've asked the big charities, yeah. do you ever get any money? Mm. And they said, never, nothing substantial, never. Mm. Mm. And then... Um, they say they do it secretly, but any of their staff, see, most Australians, their giving is done by volunteering. Yeah. Now, you can't do that with a disguise on. You have no. to do it openly. <laughs> That's right. So I don't think it's fair. Just because yeah. you're wealthy, you can do it secretly, whereas if you're a typical Australian who volunteers in the Scouts or the sporting club, you you have to do it openly, and you could be judged as a do-gooder. Yeah. yeah. That's the worst thing ever to be in Australia, a do-gooder. Do you um, where does where is Trigoboff based? Is he Sydney? In Sydney in town. In town, I'll look yeah. him up. I can give you the email of his PA. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, I'll put you back to her. I don't know. Okay. If you have a phone number or anything like that? I mean, it would be wonderful if you could talk to him. Yeah, I'll try. And um, the he's normally incredibly on the media all the time. As I mentioned, have a look at that segment. Um, of him showing off his house. Mm -hmm. It's a magnificent home, and he's yeah. quite proud to say, yes, they, oh, 50 years ago, everyone wanted a house with a quarter block. I've changed all that. Mm -hmm. As he's standing on his magnificent land. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't sort of think, oh, that's a bit unfair. <laughs> I'm, I'm quite sure he would say, well, I'm a very successful businessman, and I deserve it, and these other people yeah. didn't make enough money, so they don't deserve it. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. Well, I'll, I'll give it a go. Certainly I'll put you through to the PA and she'll give you his, his PA's name and his... And okay. His. All right, Dick. Good to talk to you. And you, Dick. Thank you for that. Thanks for Thank your time. You.